Hello my soccer universe. Well, there was only ever gonna be one jersey after this weekend that I will wear for this video, which is my Real Madrid 98-2000 home jersey. Uh, I actually have been thinking, because you know, here are now some few away jerseys, I probably should look into getting, just for the sake of it, another white Real Madrid jersey, like for other big teams where I'm looking to double up like Juventus, Inter, and so on, just in case, because... Um, Always wearing the same is boring and for some teams you need more, but we have to see. Where this uh, will go with my and when it will happen, I've been seeing one, but I, I really want to get one for cheap. So yes, that's how it's going to be. One game is also going to dominate this video, the game. Uh, we don't need to talk about much more. I mean, there was a Classico. Classico is the biggest game of the entire, um, you know, at least half season. It's it's the biggest game, even though the clubs nowadays are not the biggest anymore, to be fair. Uh, but the sheer weight and tradition behind that game makes it the outstanding fixture in the calendar. This is one of the must watches almost at any point. And yeah. You see the results that were before the Classico, <laughs> although I think it was a Sunil Bilbao game was pushed later. I, the La Liga scheduling it drives me nuts and Valencia was losing. But I, So I think the first game on Saturday was actually then Barcelona-Real Madrid, as far as I know. Um, and yes, it was a good game, I think, overall. Uh, but with some very questionable defending, I also have to say, uh, this was kind of weird to see, uh, especially the first few minutes. I mean, the opening goal by Valverde, Bonzema kind of pulls out PK, plays a pass, and he can, Valverde can go unchallenged in there and put it into the net. And Barcelona really seemed to not be physically enough to defend Real Madrid. It came as a surprise that the, the answer was really quick because I thought after the 1 0 that the Real Madrid could take apart part personal. But then uh, Jordi Alba makes a run, pulls it across, and Fati puts it in the net. And then the game was a tight game, up and down, ping pong, ping pong. It was really uh, one long pass one way, one long pass the other way. It was actually an um, enthralling watch in many ways. Uh, definitely an interesting game. Uh, Messi having a great. Uh, action where it looked like the old Messi where um, uh, Courtois makes a, month, uh, a great save but also Neto can make good saves on the other side and maybe a 2-2 would have been more representative of how the game was going but 1-1 I think it was a fair result and I have to say that in the opening 15 minutes I actually thought that Barcelona had slightly more of the game was a little bit better in the game. However, the whole thing turns on a freak VAR penalty call where Langlais clearly pulls uh, Sergio Ramos' shirt. That Sergio Ramos then dives in a completely other direction. I found a little bit weird, but I guess, you know, trying to pull away in the wall, whatever, or embellishing. Uh, it's not beyond him. And this goes to VAR. And um, I just heard that not very often this was called in La Liga, and so that was where Ronald Koeman was uh, kind of upset with the whole thing. But on the other side, it was such a clear pull and surely helped. Surely helped that it was a white jersey. If this was a Barcelona jersey, you don't see it as clearly that it's pulled. This white jersey, it, it, Sergio Ramos suddenly looked twice as big. I think there is the, uh, a case to debate this. It was due to the white jersey. And yeah, whenever Sergio Ramos steps up for a penalty this time, these days, he uh, converts and that turns the Clásico. I don't think Barcelona had any big uh, chances. I also thought it was kind of late that Kuman tried to give a little bit of a different impulse by bringing on Don Belé, Trincao and then uh, in Griezmann, who didn't start, of course, at the, at the beginning. That story is continuing. To go a little bit down down the drain because on one side uh you want to have Griezmann against kind of an insurance against Messi but Griezmann has been so not doing well for you against Messi leaving I want to say has been so not doing well for you that I don't know uh he even brought on Braithwaite for Alba I honestly have had to have to say uh that 2-1 really took kind of shocked Barcelona in in, 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 in a 
the way. They couldn't find in the game as well and, and, and anymore. And then in the when you really thought now they're gonna go all out of attack, it was all the dangerous counter attacks by um, Real Madrid, and one of those was then converted by Modric after Rodrigo assist in the 90th, killing off the game effectively. Um, yes. As I said, it was a tight game. It turned on that one penalty call. And again, Real Madrid and penalties. I think if you take every single penalty call, there is none that is really contentious per se. It is all covered up by the law. But it is really now a pattern that there are so many Real Madrid games that are decided or basically hinge on one penalty. That is something, uh, it seems at least fishy. Let's put it that way. But again, Real Madrid, I think, overall deserve to win. Barcelona, the one thing I have to, I have to say, I know Kuma will come under pressure, for sure. But he's playing a much younger squad now, so maybe you have to kind of, you know, Sergio Dest actually had, 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 for instance, a pretty good game. Uh, so I think there is something growing. You need to give it time. Whether Messi should already be in there is another question. Uh, you know, he is still widely considered the best player in the world, but I think he was a non-factor. And that, that, that's my fun fact for this video. Um, neither Messi or Ronaldo have scored in the Clásico, but Ronaldo left in 2018. Since 2018, but Ronaldo left in 2018. So, uh, that was something, uh, something about Messi that still does not look quite right. And it can definitely be that all this... Uh, a tragedy, comedy, whatever, uh, around him leaving and the not, no, not leaving definitely could have had an impact as well. So yeah, uh, Real Madrid, big, big win. I think Zidane has not lost as a coach at the camp now, which is also kind of an impressive stat. The other games are relatively short. I mean, Sevilla losing at home to Eibar is another one of those freak results. Sevilla has now lost two in a row after, I think, being undefeated for 17 or 18 games. Um, doesn't look good, Kike getting the goal for Eibar there. Um, uh, Atletico Madrid was an even first half game, and then Atletico Madrid, they score right after the half. I think it was a few seconds uh, where just the, goal, the goalkeeper speculates and Hermoso puts it in the short near near corner then they get a, a player sent off in the 74th and Luis Suarez at the end who could have scored an, uh, early as well makes uh, the 2-0 and uh, Atletico Madrid in the second half actually then more cruising towards that win um, Real Madrid cannot get a win Cadiz uh, rather timid 0-0 draw against Villarreal who just um, Scored five against Sivospor, Cadiz having a goal ruled out for offside uh, early on, and then there was not much happening there. Um, not much happening also in Getafe Granada. I think Granada had one chance that hit a little bit the crossbar, then a penalty foul that Montoro converts in stoppage time, and they hang on because Getafe cannot find a way forward, and it's kind of weird. Against Barcelona, yes, they played similarly, uh, but seeing power, Barcelona is defensively in all the sounds, Granada as weird as this sounds. Uh, but Granada can pull out a win where Barcelona could not. And then I think we are talking again about the most fun team uh, in the league with Real Sociedad. That team now is on, on the roll. I think uh, they won three of the last four after you know, start starting with two draws, then a win, then a loss. And then since then they are, they are winning and sometimes really, really big. Uh, this time it's a 4 1 against Huesca. Um, Oyar Sabal converts a penalty, Mir uh, gets the equalizer in a very similar fashion as Atletico Madrid got the first goal. It's again a goal in the 46th minute. There was, was with the 46th minute this time. But then Oyar Sabal um, puts them uh, on the winning road in the, fifth, in the 54th and then two assists by uh, David Silva to Porto and Isaac in the 68th and 75th set Real Sociedad on their way to another win. And as I said, they are a fun team to watch again last season. They were also, can they sustain it? This is where you always have to ask. In the standings, Real Sociedad is now on top. However, if you look at the chances, it's Real Madrid now, who is for the first time this season, and that's why they are on the number one spot. They're for the first time this season, the clear the favorites to win the league. Barcelona is only midfield, and you see a lot of changes. The table is very, very uneven still, because we also have a Monday night game that I will give you next week between Levante and Celta. 
uh, and there are many games that need to made, made it up, so there's a lot of things that can still happen. Uh, there's also not, like in other leagues, that there are some teams pulling away, however, you know, it would look worrisome for Barcelona to have only seven points after uh, five games, but then the others, uh, you know, on top you have seven games, Real Madrid has six games, so still lots to be played. What is the most damning uh, statistic is the goal average in Spain is really, really low, 2.1. That's not great. And I have had to say whenever I watch La Liga, it's not the greatest league to watch at the moment. And a few year, years ago, you, you should only have watched La Liga. Uh, but at least it's a very even league. And let's see where it goes. Uh, when we look at re relegation, Valladolid now is also on favorite. Elche, due to the low ra rating and having a few games uh, in hand, although they started well with three, three wins is also in there as is Uesca. You know, the promoter teams will always have it hard. Valencia is also getting scarily. Valencia and, and Levante are getting scarily red here in this table. Uh, the next round, I said that's about the Monday night game, but when we look, the, what's the big uh, game in here? Atletico Bilbao against Sevilla, sounds at least from the names interesting. Gramas replaced at home in Uesca. Should be a win, but we saw uh, this also against um, Cadiz and uh, Shakhtar. Barcelona away to Alaves, can they rebound? That's a big question. Um, Valencia, Getafe, again, a season, a two seasons ago. This would, would have been a big game. Now it is uh, kind of so-and-so, so we have to see and we again have a Monday night game which I personally do not like, but I will keep my... I will shoot the La Liga videos Monday if, uh, Monday afternoon, evening, and uh, it will not um, have the result, although when it posts, you may know this result already. Moving to Ligue 1, I actually saw quite, quite a few highlights. Lorient, even first half, second half. Honestly, Lorient was the better team. However, they lose through a freak goal where Tomba with a deep pass from the halfway line. The goalkeeper goes past it and it hits the, uh, uh, Balerdi on the back and it goes into internet. At first, it looked like that it hit the goalkeeper. He threw it himself in the in internet with a very uh, a clumsy uh, save, but no. Same thing then, Lorient has chances, was the better team, should have gotten at least a draw on them, but Marseille hangs on, which is the mark of a good team. Also, PSG was not very convincing. Yes, they get two goals in the first half through Moise Ken. Uh, one really nicely assisted by Neymar, although it took a slight diffraction, it was the second one. But in between, Dijon had a pretty clear goal scoring chance where just a striker who was playing for PSG, now I don't know if it's his name, of course, cannot hit the target. And that was, even when it was 2-0, Dijon had chances to at least score one, if not two goals. It's very late when um, Mbappé comes. Uh, then finally, on in the 73rd, the game kind of descends uh, into a rout when uh, Neymar says uh, Mbappé in the 81st and Sarabi then in the 87th, he makes two, two goals, uh, but was not ce ce celebrating because of the kids that he supported in his battle against, I think it was cancer, uh, died this week. So you could definitely see he was not up for celebration. There. Last night got postponed for what I can only think are COVID reasons. Uh, Bordeaux gets a win 2-0. Uh, as the Strasbourg against Brest was a big win for them. Metz over Saint Saint-Étienne. Saint -Étienne. Going, tra trending real down. Huge win for us over Montpellier, away from home Montpellier, I think getting uh, two red cards, which definitely will have played a hand in that one. Uh, I saw the highlights of Nice, Lille. Yeah, I mean, the goals came very early in the um, second half with Nice taking the lead. Nice just cannot find the winner actually a little, a little bit hang, hanging on to that one. But I think it's, yeah, it was a rather, Lille is the better team overall, but uh, Nice, I think, after being mauled by, by Leverkusen, wanted to come back with a good score. Uh, speaking of mauled, uh, Lyon clinically against Monaco. Four goals in the first half. I mean, Depay says uh, by Awa early on, and then Toko Kambi Awa converts a penalty, and they can be again uh, 34th or 34th make three more goals uh, in the game where actually Monaco was somewhat in the game. 
Benjeda, right after I have pulls from back, it's a more even, even game, but you know, with a 4 1 score line, what can you do? Before we look at the table, Liga jersey review, I still need to edit it, but you will get the first week, uh, Vieiros towards the weekend, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, then we can look now at the standings here, where PSG marked the date 20. It was actually, yeah, 25th of October, they got on the, uh, on the 24th, they got on top of the 25th of October. It got confirmed that they are first in the league for the first time this season. A month ago, we were talking crisis when they lost to Marseille, a bit more than a month, month ago. Now they're top, top of the table with a goal D difference, it's just outstanding. Um, the bottom, yes, they have a few games have now to play, but the bottom now, kind of solidifies itself as does a little bit of top and is dropping off. Let's see what Lille uh, can do. Typically French league is very tight and then at the very end it kind of chops off towards the bottom. So let's see, start, start the runs. Last week they had about a 40% chance of being relegated. This huge win actually, although they did not move in the table, but this got them due to a good, good rating really uh, now in the model out of trouble. Uh, next uh, weekend with Lille Lyon, I think this is the outstanding match. PSG is playing away to Nantes, which is traditional, but you know, PSG these days is in a different league. Uh, Marseille is playing against Lens at home, and then uh, Breton Derby. Can Rennes get back on track? That is, I think, also questions that we have, have to ask ourselves. In Portugal, I owe you the Monday night result between Boavista and Guimarães, which ends with a 1-0 victory uh, for Guimarães. And in this round, you know, Sporting gets a win at Santa Clara, Porto, uh, very narrow win over Gil Vicente, uh, Braga wins the derby over Guimarães. I think that was an interesting game. Benfica has not played yet as of the recording of this video. So uh, there's... They have, a, they have a game less, but still will be first in, in the table. And if they win, they have a really sizable uh, lead in the league already. So, um, yes, it is early. It's only five games in. But if they win and they have five points after five games, that's a pretty substantial lead. It's very much... Sporting has also a game in hand uh, that will be played uh, this week against Gil Vicente on the 28th. So, two days from now, where uh, Porto... Where they could leapfrog uh, Porto, Braga is now, they have been kind of down, but they have uh, moving up as well. And now in fourth place, and it seems like the top four in Portugal are the top four. Uh, next round, uh, yeah, I don't see any really big uh, match there, except that we have Porto on Friday and Benfica on Monday. So again, there will be not much Benfica news uh, for now, but they are first in the table. I think that's news enough. Um, anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, uh, drop a line below what you thought about the games in those three Western European leagues, um, especially on the Classico where I spent a little bit more time this time around. Um, yeah, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.